Hello everyone, this is Pamperchew. Today I wanted to show you a few of the laptops that I've gotten at the Goodwill in the past uh, few months. This is just three of them, uh, the ones that I keep for myself. A lot of times I'll fix laptops and give them to other people that don't have a computer. But uh, if you go to Goodwill bins, um, once in a while you'll find IBMs and they're priced anywhere between $5 and $20. I got this one here for $5, this one for uh, 10 and that one for 15. Um, sometimes there's problems with them. Um, this one here has a couple problems that I've fixed. I had bad IDE controller and a bad backlight. Um, all I did here, I just replaced the backlight. The screen works good now. Well, it works good enough. And uh, for the hard drive, what I did is I installed a USB flash drive and ran a cable from the USB port all the way along the sides and underneath right into the empty hard drive bay now that the hard drive controller doesn't work I can use that bay for a flash drive and I have Linux installed on this one because Linux uh, doesn't mind being put on a USB flash drive it came with two gigs of RAM um, what is this 1.6 gigahertz Pentium M processor uh, Wi-Fi they all have Wi-Fi and a uh, gig gigabit ethernet so it's a pretty good laptop pretty good specs uh, it's a t40p also the, the resolution of the display is a 1400 by 1050 this one here the one I got for ten dollars this is a t23 it's a very nice computer it has a high-res monitor also the 1400 by uh, 1050 go to properties here this has one gig of memory no, 1.2 gigahertz Pentium 3 processor. So it's uh, also a very nice computer. Um, the only thing wrong with this one when I got it is the hard drive was locked down. Someone had a password on it, a BIOS password. And the way I fixed it was I just installed a different hard drive into it and it seemed to work just fine. So the hard drive that came out of this went to another laptop. And no problem there. Um, there's the uh, Linux loading on the other one. I use uh, OpenSUSE. Kind of a neat thing I wanted to show on these uh, high-res displays. You have so much more room now. If you go to settings, there's the resolution of the monitor, 1400 by 1050. So it does look really good. And these two have that high-res display. This one has a perfect display. The backlight's still good and very bright. Um, so there wasn't much wrong with this one when I got it. And this one here, the one I got for five dollars, this is a uh, T30, IBM T30. And all I had wrong with it was, well the keyboard was missing a couple keys and uh, I think it needed a hard drive when I got it. It was only five dollars. So uh, I, put a I put a new laptop hard drive in it and um, installed Windows. Now they all come with licenses. This one had an XP Professional license, this had a Windows 2000 license, this had XP Professional. And because I buy these so often, sometimes they don't work. I just I save the licenses and then for times where this one like this one didn't have an XP Professional license, um, I just pulled one out of my uh, box of extra laptop parts and found a license that work on this one. XP Professional and uh, when you go to install Windows, you just type in the, the license key and it'll work just fine. As long as you have it installed on one computer. So each one has its own license. Um, but this one here for five bucks, um, it's a two gigahertz Pentium 4 with one gig of RAM. And uh, the keys that are missing, the function key and the Z key. So not a big deal. Now the, the uh, resolution on this monitor is not as good. It's only a 1024 by 768. And you can see the difference in resolution. 1024 by 768 compared to a um, 1400 by 1050. You get a lot more desktop space on those. And they're really nice to work with because the, the text is so clear. But a $5 computer, it's really nice. IBMs, they last forever and they're easy to fix. A uh, really cool feature with all these, they have a track point which is a really good mouse. It's good on your wrist and it's a lot quicker than a trackpad. You can disable the trackpads that come with some of them. 
I always disable them in the BIOS because they're pretty useless. Another cool feature is every single IBM has a nightlight. You uh, hold down function and you hit the nightlight key up in the top corner and the little LED comes on. And uh, if you're using your laptop in the dark, it lights up your keyboard. This one has it too. And there's the nightlight on the other one. It's a really neat feature. Now a lot of times the batteries on these are no good just because they're age. But um, this one here, this was built in 2006, so it still has a pretty good battery. It has a four-hour life. Um, and this one here, the battery gives me about 20 minutes of battery life, which is enough to get for, to another electric port. But um, you can buy brand new um, batteries for these things off eBay, around $30 for a long-life battery. I do need to replace these two, but they're so cheap to replace it. I don't really need a, a battery right now. Because, um, you know, wherever I'm working, I can plug it in. There's the DVD-ROM and the IR port. IR ports are good for uh, short-range data communication. Since all IBMs have the IR port, you can actually set up an infrared network and use the Internet over infrared. Um, another nice feature about IBM laptops, they all use a standard disk drive. So if you're... Uh, and one fails, pop it out, and get another one. There's a couple different thicknesses. The thin, thinner laptops have a thinner version, but for the most part, they all use the same connectors, and the drives are all interchangeable. And they make floppy drive versions, zip drive versions, super disk drives. They all fit in the same slot, and they're hot swappable. There's the disk drive on this one. Just pull the little tab, that pops out, and the drive comes out.